How many bottles do you produce? About 3,000. Oh, you can drink it at home, (laughs) you and your wife. And three of you, 1,000 each. Italian Wine Podcast. Chin Chin with Italian Wine People. Welcome to On the Road Special Edition with Stevie Kim. This episode takes Stevie to Cittari, in the heart of Lugana DOC, at the foot of Lake Garda. Listen to the conversation about the history of Turbiano grapes, and watch Stevie share a glass or three with the producers. Hello everybody, we're back. Uh, This is our last stop in Lugana today. As you know, we're doing kind of a small exploratory um, episode about this area. Consortium of Lugana was one of our supporters for Veneto International Academy. It's a little bit hot for my taste, to be quite honest, but we thought we'd give you a little snapshot of the Lugana area. So this is our last stop, and we are here with Chittari. Is it Chittari or Chittari? Chittari is right. Chittari, okay. It's a smaller winery. Uh, This is kind of what you see is what you get kind of winery. But they, uh, with this wine, Lugana uh, Conchiglia, uh, they've won 95 points for five-star wines um, this year and in the selection of the guide. So, ciao. Ciao. Ciao, ragazzi. Ciao. So, ciao, they're very original. He's Francesca. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and this is Francesca. Francesca. <laughs> so you can't get it wrong. Francesco and Francesca. So, tell me a little bit about who you are and what you do in Cittari. So Cittari is a family driven in own company. Francesco is the third generation now, so he's the real boss. And there are three of us uh, here, me and my colleague Simone that deals with vines and the cellar. Basically the winery was founded in 1975 from his grandfather and it started with four hectares. And nowadays we have uh, 35 for a production of about uh, 350,000 bottles. Yeah, so there's three of you making a lot of many bottles of, of wine. A lot of work. A lot yeah. of work. <laughs> <laughs> but we have fun. So basically, 100,000, 100,000, 150,000 bottles each. Right? Almost, yeah, almost, almost. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about um, the different types of labels. So we have uh, uh, different Lugana but we also produce other uh, appellations like uh, San Martino della Battaglia that you see here or Sparkling, uh, Lugana based. We also have a Rosé and a Red, Riviera del Garda Classico, Chiaretto and Riviera del Garda Classico Rosso, but of course our typical production is Lugana. So we have three different uh, Lugana that are the three different expression of the soil, of the terroir of our vines. Okay, so before we start tasting the wines, Francesca, tu non sei veronese, giusto? No, sono di origini milanese, sì. nato a Milano, vissuto in Brianza, mi sono trasferito qui un, ormai quasi 15 anni fa. Sì, un pezzetto di cuore ancora in, sul lago di Como e da quelle parti, la passione è qui così, per cui bene. Allora, uh, Francesco, se, se hai voglia, raccontaci un po' la, la vostra linea di produzione. Dunque, se partiamo dai Lugana, che la fa da padrona sulla produzione, sono tre differenti Lugana, sorgente, conchiglie e torre. Si differenziano per le epoche di vendemmia, giocando sulle differenze di terreno e di zonazione dei vigneti. Parte in collina, parte sulle arzille, per cui avremo una produzione, una maturazione più anticipata sulla parte alta della collina, su una terra più magra e più sassosa e più lenta e che si protrae di più nel tempo nella parte più bassa. Il mix di queste differenze ci permette di ottenere questi tre differenti stili partendo dalle stesse origini che il turbiano. Quante bottiglie fate di conchiglia? Siamo sulle 120-130 mila bottiglie. So is this Altrettanto... your signature wine? Questo è il vostro vino sì. di firma? Si può Quello, dire? Sì. Conchiglia is basically our first wine that we bottle when we decided to have a, a line of bottled wines mm-hmm. because at the very start uh, we only produced wine but not bottling it at the very beginning mm-hmm. and it's called conchiglia or the, the fossil mussel mm-hmm. because uh, we have here around a lot of uh, fossils oh, really? because of the origin of the area itself. We have three Lugana, Sorgente, so the water source, mm-hmm. Conchiglia, the mussel 
and uh, Torre the Tower because we are very close to the Torre uh, of San Martino della Battaglia. The later harvest is Torre, this is the middle one. Torre. Yes, Sorgente is the first one. Okay, so Conchiglia is kind of your middle ground. Yeah. Okay, and I, I do have a question. Perché la scelta di questa forma di bottiglia? Chi è che ha scelto innanzitutto? È semplicemente per uh, gusto. Prima avevamo una due, cosa estetica. Una funzione estetica. Altrimenti ci sono i racconti un po' più fantasiosi sulle formule auree. But you have another wine, right? Però anche questa. Però questa è vecchio vignetto. Questo è San Martino, che è un'altra doc fatta con un vetocai. Però questo avete scelto una bottiglia? Una bottiglia differente, perché oltre a Lugana, questi tre Lugana, abbiamo altri due bianchi, uno un IGT, eretico, e anche lui ha la sua bottiglia dedicata, e San Martino, per distinguerlo dal, dalle altre doc, anche visivamente, ha, ha una, sua, una sua linea, insomma. There is also a functional reason, because, for example, the green, so the, the dark green glass, helps uh, the, the wine to protect itself from light, for example. So it's better uh, if you consider that Lugana can also age very well. Okay, so let's taste the wine. Yeah, Conchiglia. There are many Lugana producers, right? There, I think there are 95 producers in the consortium. More than 150. Yeah. The consortium uh, more than more than 120, under 30 now, okay. and in total I think about 200 producers. So everybody produces Lugana. So how can you tell in a blind tasting? How do you know it's your wine? Can you tell the difference? Uh, Let's be honest. Difficile. It's difficult. È difficile, right? ma generalmente si si riesce o si pensa di aver riconosciuto il proprio, poi la certezza non la si ha. E quali sono le caratteristiche specifiche per il vostro vino Conchiglia? So, uh, basically Conchiglia is a, a very a fresh wine, you, you notice the great minerality it has. Of course, the traditional Lugana notes are the citrus notes, the white flower mm -hmm. uh, notes, and uh, uh, it depends from the, from the vintage. Uh, sometimes you can find uh, more apple or pear or uh, apricot. And it also depends from the maturation of the wine. So when you drink it so that it's freshly bottled, it's uh, more on the citrus note. Then if you let it age a little bit, uh, you can notice uh, yellow pulp fruit or uh, mature or dried fruit. But the typical, uh, the typical aromas, typical taste of Lugana is uh, very recognizable because of this minerality, this freshness that comes out. And it's also very long lasting in the mouth. But um, if you were to compare Lugana with uh, Tulbiano, with a, an international grape variety, what it would it be? It doesn't anything uh, in common, basically. So. Uh, Actually, we did a mistake as a consortium in the past years because we called it uh, Trebbiano di Lugana, right, but, right. but basically it's false. So it's wrong because uh, now, for example, we call it Turbiana mm -hmm. because of that, uh, because Trebbiano has nothing in common. So they did uh, uh, analysis, DNA, exams and so on, and they discovered that Turbiana is uh, uh, a totally different grape, indigenous and local. And uh, so we have to And it has nothing to do with Trebbiano di Suave? Nothing. Mm, yes, a little bit. It's sort of a cousin. Yeah, a cousin. Yeah, they're similar in a way. Can it be aged, this one? Can it, be, it can be aged, of course. Uh, Lugana is very good, aged. If you ask me how long, I don't have a, uh, an answer now because we are experimenting uh, wines that are also 20 years old. So do you have a reserve of library wines? A very small one, but uh, just for the events, uh, for the awards, for example, the guides. Uh, unfortunately, not enough uh, to enjoy uh, with customers and so on. Do you want to tell me a little bit about your sparkling wine? Yes, sparkling wine is a sort of an experiment. We decided to uh, experiment a little bit to enjoy also the potential of the, of the grape itself. And so we started years ago and we don't produce it every year, so only ah, in, the, okay. in the best uh, vintages. Uh, for example, this one uh, is a 2016, this is a fresh one. Uh, and this is also a very limited quantity. Produce. How many bottles do you uh, About 3,000. Oh, so you can drink it at home, <laughs> you and your wife. And three of you, 1,000 each. 
Is it made from 100% Trubiana? 100% Trubiana, method classico, so like Champenoise method, just to understand and do you better. And do it here? Everything is done here? Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, is this officially Chiaretto? It's the Riviera del Garda Classico, DOC Chiaretto, the old name. Oh my goodness. Um, How do you expect other people to understand that? We are working on it. Yeah, that's it's too difficult. It. We are trying now with Consortium Valtenesi Riviera del Garda to call it uh, Vino Rosa to distinguish it from uh, Chiaretto from other parts of Italy because uh, it creates a lot of uh, confusion. Yes, it uh, does. Because we have uh, at the moment the same name but we use a totally different uh, uh, grapes. But in terms of taste, is it similar? It's totally different. It's richer, huh. it's uh, uh, rounder. Also the alcohol. The alcohol is also high, exactly. Yes. So for this wine, we work with four uh, grapes that are called Groppello, Indigenous, and uh, uh, Marzemino, Sangiovese, and Barbera. So it's mandatory to use uh, these, uh, these four grapes, grapes to um, have the appellation. When did you start doing the... We start producing it percent. about uh, 15 years ago with a small uh, batch, generally sold in Europe and Northern Italy. The biggest market for us is Germany, but we sell now in 10 different countries and in Italy. And uh, US is also a market that is uh, growing slowly, but uh, continuously. Is it distributed nationally in America or just regionally? Uh, no, regionally. So we had an importer, for example, in Texas and Florida, some maybe in New York, because you know everybody looks uh, at New York and San Francisco are the big cities where all are. And what are the, um, the greatest challenges that you are facing today as a producer in Lugana? Basically, the increasing of demand of this wine because it's becoming more and more popular. Mm -hmm. But uh, people have to understand that uh, this is a limited area and uh, with limited actors and so on. So we cannot produce also to follow the rules of consortia to guarantee the quality of the wine. We cannot produce more than what we have mm -hmm. in the vine. Um, how many hectares do you have? We have 35, all close to the vinery, and it helps also uh, to preserve the freshness of the grape when you, when you collect it. So, you know, for, for our audience who've never tried, uh, who's never tried um, Lugana before, what would you, how would you tell them that this is, you should really try this wine? What are the characteristics that um, that you can entice them to try the wine. Freshness, uh, minerality, very easy to drink, very easy to pair. Taste of summer, taste of uh, Legarda holiday in, in a sip. Everyday wine, why not? Uh, uh, we have these three wines, Sorgente, Conchiglia and Torre. Uh, sometimes we can choose, for example, Sorgente for aperitivo mm -hmm. or just uh, for lunch. Conchiglia is something more elegant, so you can enjoy it uh, in the evening, after work, uh, just relaxing and chilling out after a long day. Uh, Torre is something more special for special occasion or weekends or when you're with the, your friends and partners and so on. So uh, you, you can also uh, pair an occasion with the wines, but it's very easy to enjoy. Okay, very good. Well, I hope you can all come and visit Lugana um, soon. We'll certainly will be back in November uh, with our Gita Scolastica before Wine to Wine. That, it's a wrap. Ciao ragazzi. Ciao, thank you. Okay, cheers. And that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us and be sure to tune in next time. For more fascinating interviews from the world of wine, go to italianwinepodcast.com or find us on SoundCloud, Jimalaya, Spotify, or wherever you get your pods. Chin chin, and thanks for listening.